Cherokees were created in the mountains of North Carolina. But at one time we had to be associated with them. And they say that's the connection is lacrosse and stickball. Because stickball to the Cherokee people, it's a game nowadays, but it wasn't always that way. It used to be an alternative to war. I feel like the Cherokee history is intertwined with black history. We learned that we were actually a part of the Trail of Tears and everything else that they went through. And then some of us are even Cherokee in our heritage. Big fire burning in the middle of it. Two men in the village whose job it is to keep that fire burning 24 hours a day. Don't ever let it go out. That's our connection to the creator. It was interesting. It was eye-opening, really. And the, to see the, the, the amount of comparisons you can make between the African-American and the Native American struggle. I mean, again, comparisons, not the same, but comparisons altogether. Like, you could still find, you know, things that were similar. Yeah, yeah. And to follow up with that, um, something I was always told even before this trip even began uh, with the Cherokee, considering that there's Cherokee uh, lineage in my family, um, as well as probably many others, the Cherokee and a lot of African Americans, there was a lot of integration. The most obviously impacting part of it, and this is near the end, of uh, the museum are the statues that, uh, that, sh that depict the, uh, the Trail of Tears. One of the ones that stuck out to me the most um, was the little boy. He was being dragged away from his aunt from, um, they, they had rocks there, but uh, I'm assuming it was supposed to symbolize the burial of um, his mother. Obviously, it, it shakes you. The, the wall with the beads, and so the white beads showed how many of the Native Americans um, had survived the Trail of Tears, mm -hmm. but then the colored beads showed how many had fallen. When I look at the colored bead, I was like, that is one life lost. And I count, I go one, two, three, four. My relatives that come to Oklahoma to get away from racism, violence, and death. In fact, my grandfather, yes, just barely made it out of Tennessee alive. So Black Wall Street was an entrepreneurial mecca that existed in Tulsa, Oklahoma in a segregated black community called the Greenwood District. It was called Black Wall Street because of the incredible entrepreneurship that existed in this relatively small 35 square block community across the tracks from and adjacent to downtown Tulsa, white Tulsa. The Tulsa race riot happened in 1921 on May 31st, the evening of May 31st through the night and into June 1st. And it's the worst of the so-called race riots in, in American history. We know that between 100 and 300 people lost their lives. 1,250 structures, including businesses and homes, were destroyed. Here in Tulsa, another uh, contributing factor was the rise of the KKK, as well as one of our particular media outlets called the Tulsa Tribune, published a series of inflammatory articles and editorials that really um, fan the flames of hostility in the, in the white community against the black community. In this old nigger town were a lot of bad niggers. And a bad nigger is about the lowest thing that walks on two feet. Give a bad nigger his booze and his dope and a gun and he thinks he can shoot up the world. All these four things were found in nigger town. Booze, dope, bad niggers, and guns. That's the beginning of a longer editorial. I'll spare you the rest of it. Walking through, I could tell that the space had been designed very purposefully. And I thought, like, the very beginning statue, which had humiliation, hostility, and hope, was really powerful. So at Reconciliation Park, forget the name of the woman who took us through, but she was really, her energy really made me engage with the park a lot more. And as you go around, you'll see uh, the race right newspaper article. As you look further, you'll see actual buildings burning. I'm gonna step back and let you continue. Actually buildings burning. And you'll see Buck Franklin on the top. When we're going around, 
she kind of tells you, you know, they weren't allowed to just go freely into the streets um, when the race riots were happening and even after the race riots um, occurred in order for them to get through and get through safely, your hands had to be up so that they wouldn't believe you were a danger to them or shoot them. And you were walking, um, she even said, you know, for miles sometimes, you were walking just to go to an internment camp. We come here to remember those who were killed, those who survived, and those changed forever. May all who leave here know the impact of violence. May this memorial offer comfort, strength, peace, hope, and serenity. At the memorial, it was kind of, we were coming off of a long day, so at first I think everyone was just walking around, looking at things, and then somebody mentioned, this is where the building was. These are the charred, literally charred remains of the building. Each chair represented a life lost within that, that body yeah. period. And the bigger chairs were adults, and then the small chairs were the children. And that got to me. And this is Main Street for bowling. You see here on the left, their municipal building, uh, which was leveled by an earthquake that came through here about six years ago, and thus their newer public safety building. I was excited to go to Bowling because it is still predominantly black and they are very proud of everything that they've accomplished up to this point and still are accomplishing. First thing I thought of, I'm sitting in there looking at this rodeo demonstration, demonstration. I'm like, oh my God, if my dad was here. So Bowley was definitely different than what I was expecting. I was expecting to roll into at least a modest sized little town, and it was not that. The rodeo, one of the most exciting parts, I was ready for the trip. That's the main reason why I want to go here, just to go to the rodeo. Like, that's why I signed up for the trip. I'm like, I'm going to see black cowboys. Woo! -hoo. First time got to ride a horse, loved it. And then the guy told me, he was like, you're like a natural, you can get this. I was like, really? So I'm like, now I'm thinking, I am definitely going to buy a horse. Oh, 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 um, I'll take him and I'll do everything. I think we can learn perseverance and grit from Bowley and being content with where we're at. One thing we need to learn from Bowley for sure, don't ever kill the spirit and stay as a community. Don't leave and just go off and do your own. You need to come back to your community and build onto it. BCC has honestly become a safe haven for me. Uh, the research tour created, um, in a sense, a family uh, because we were all together learning about difficult things. We were all together struggling, you know? Uh, we were all together being emotional. We were all together being happy and laughing. Uh, we were all growing together. BCC is like amazing. And then also the fact that they give you this opportunity to go on a research tour, like you have to go. You don't find um, places like this everywhere where you feel comfortable. I can feel like I'm welcome, you know? Um, and, and I appreciate, I truly, truly appreciate uh, Ms. Thomas and Mr. Bill and Ms. Juanita, everybody that is behind the Black Cultural Center and was behind this tour because they create that environment for us. The fact that I was just, I just, I was just in this group is, is just blessed. I'm so glad I, you know, chose to be on this trip. It's, it's really something of invaluable. You can't take it away. You can't replace it with anything else in this world. It, it's just, it, it's, it's a little bit indescribable. It's, it, for me, especially for me personally, it's like yeah, beyond my expectations. 